Amen. Amen. Something happens when you praise him. Something happens when you praise him. Can you say amen to that? Come on, one more time. Clap your hands and just praise him. Thank you, praise team. We are honored today to have Brother Brad and Sister Kim Christian and Mason and Austin here. He's the one that just led worship. For those of you who don't know, we're honored that they are here. All the way from Virginia, and uh, we, we think Zanesville is their home, but uh, they were, for those of you who don't know them, they were here. They were here back uh, when we started, when, when Pastor uh, decided to plant the church in Crooksville. And uh, I remember many, many afternoons, Sister Christian, and uh, we, would, we would leave this service at 10 o'clock and uh, we would go over to the Christian's house and, and uh, we would, listen y'all, we would eat. And I don't mean like sandwich and chips eat. I mean, we would, we would throw down. We would throw down. It, you know, God was in that food. And, uh, and, uh, and, and then what would happen, the problem with that though, the problem, y'all, y'all right to stand for a second. I'm going to stand longer than you. The problem, the problem though, is you get to the Crooksville service at two o'clock and, and there's that big stained glass window behind the pulpit. Y'all know what I'm talking about? There's that big stained glass window and right at around 2.30, that sun would hit just right to where if you were on the first few rows, that sun would be hitting you right in the face. Brother Chuck, I'm telling you right now, the word of God is powerful. But man, sometimes when you eat too much, food's powerful too. Man, I was, I wasn't saying yes, I was nodding. And uh, one time, one time pastor caught, pastor caught Brother Christian. He reminded me of this in between services. He caught, he caught Brother Christian. He was gone, asleep, totally asleep. Pastor was making a point and he said, ain't that right, Brother Christian? And Brother Christian came, oh God. We are, we're honored that you all are here and love you very much. You're, you've been a gift to this church and we appreciate them. Amen. Well, it's Pentecost Sunday. Amen. Are you ready for the word? Amen. If you, if you came expecting Pastor Bounds, I'm sorry. Come back next week. He's preaching a dedication service in Colorado. And uh, remember him in your prayers. And uh, he hates to be away, but, but we're thankful for a pastor that hears from God and obeys God. Amen. And so we want him to do exactly what the Lord's telling him to do. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Let's pray for him right now. Lord, we pray for pastor. God, we pray, God, that you would touch him. Lord, that as he preaches today, you would anoint him and you would lead him in the Holy Ghost. God, that your spirit, oh Lord, would guide and direct, oh God. Your anointing is certainly on him already, oh God. But we pray, oh Lord, God, that there'd be no opposition. God, that there'd be liberty in the spirit, oh Lord, as he preaches. Let chains be broken. God, let, let things be put in order. God, in Jesus' name we pray. We pray and bless them. And Brother Sawyer, God, as they travel, protect them, oh Lord. Put your angels around about them, oh God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. John chapter 14. And I'm going to start with verse 16. Y'all hear me? If you've got it, say, I've got it. If you're, if you're looking at the screen, say, I'm cheating. John 14 and 16. And I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter. He may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, watch, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. 
Yet a little while and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me because I live, ye shall live also. And that day ye shall know that I am in my Father and ye in me and I in you. Go down to verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, turn to your neighbor say, it's the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all, th somebody shout all things. Are y'all are y'all are y'all ready for the word today, man? I just feel hunger in this room. He, somebody say, all things. He'll teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Verse 28. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. Man, I'm gonna mess with some of y'all today. I'm gonna just mess with you. If he loved me, if what, watch what he says to his disciples. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said I go to the Father for my Father is greater than I. I'm gonna preach to you on this subject. A gift greater than Jesus. I expected that response right there. Oh God, Pastor Bounds is out of town. The assistant pastor is talking about a gift greater than Jesus. Get me out of here. Just hang on. Don't leave yet. I know I've got to get to my point very quickly this morning. Don't hang on. Turn to your neighbor and say, hang on. It's going to be all right. Say, stay close. Now that you're awake, let's pray together. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your word. God, we thank you for who you are. Pray that you would move among us today. Oh God, we pray that your spirit would have liberty, oh God, in this building, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. God bless you. You may be seated. <laughs> Some of y'all are deciding if you're going to listen to me today or not. A gift greater than Jesus. When Jesus came, he... He came to this earth as uh, looking or appearing just as any other child. He had a nose, he had uh, two eyes, two ears, he had a mouth, he had fingers and toes, hands and feet. He, he looked just like everybody else. And if you based who he was off of where he was born, you would not have a very high regard for him. Born in a manger, in a place where, uh, to my knowledge, not many babies were born. Bo born in the lowest places of uh, the lowest of lows, came and, and 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 was born in in that place. And and even though the packaging uh, of his coming and 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 the looks of his appearance didn't didn't look like much to rave about, he was the greatest gift that man had ever received. He didn't, oh, is there a witness in the building today? He, he didn't look like a whole lot, but, but, but he came as man's greatest gift. I want you to know that the greatest gift we have ever received is a redeemer that would robe himself in flesh and die so that I could live. He was not just a man. He was much more, Brother Ben, than a man. He was more than just the carpenter that he would grow up to be. He was more than just a great teacher that some of him regarded him as. But Matthew 1 and 23 tells us that he was Emmanuel, God with us. God, the God of heaven and earth, the, the, the one who stretched the stars in the sky in six days and formed what we know as the, as the galaxies and the earth and the planets today. The God that formed all of that robed himself in flesh. He became Emmanuel, God with us. 
can I tell you today that he did not send another individual to do his business? He did not send a separate being to do his business. Another, I'll take another step. He did not send his son to die for him. He did not send his son. He robed his own self in flesh. Amen. He robed his own self. I'm going to tell you right now from the outset of this message that there is only one God and his name is Jesus. For Deuteronomy 6 tells us, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is. The Lord our God is. He's one Lord. In Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 11, he said, I, even I am the Lord. And beside me, there is no Savior. He's the only God. James 2 and 19 tells us, thou believest in one God, thou doest well, amen. Ephesians 4 and 5 says that there is one Lord, there is one faith in one baptism. He did not send another person to do his work, amen. He robed himself in flesh, becoming God. God with us. That's why Timothy tells us that without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached on to the Gentiles and received up into glory. Amen. That's why the Bible says, wherefore God hath also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Oh, can I preach here for a moment? that at the name Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. There is only one God today and his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. I'm glad I know who Jesus is today. Jesus was the Father and the Son at the same time. Amen. He was the Father and the Son at the same time, just like he was the flesh and he was the Spirit at the same time, just like he was the Alpha, he is the Alpha and the Omega at the same time. Oh, let's stop here for a minute. Just like he's the root and the branch at the same time. Just like he's the shepherd and he's the lamb at the same, oh God. In his flesh, he got hungry, but in his spirit, he fed thousands. Can I talk about Jesus for just a moment? In his flesh, he got thirsty, but in his spirit, he was the living water. Amen. In his flesh, he drank the wine, but in his spirit, he turned the water into wine. In his flesh, he was tempted, but in his spirit, he conquered, amen, the tempter. He was flesh and he was spirit at the same time. That's how he can be, amen, your counselor, your healer, your provider, your financial advisor, your way maker. That's, that, he can be the voice in the middle of your midnight hour. He can be all of it at the same time. I've come to tell you today that there's nobody more powerful than Jesus. There's no drug more powerful than Jesus. There's no doctor more wise than Jesus. There's no counselor more wise than Jesus. There is no one like him. I'll take it a step further. Colossians 2 says that I am complete in him. 
meaning I can't be complete outside of him. See, some of you are wondering, how am I so, how, why do I feel empty? Why does there feel like there's something missing? That's why people run to sports and they run to drugs and they run to relationships and they run to overtime and they run to money and they, they run to all of these things uh, trying to fulfill that missing piece. Uh, but let me tell you right now, amen, Jesus is your answer. You are complete in him and only him. And that one God came in flesh for one reason, one reason. It was not to go on tour and heal the sick, although he did that. It was not to raise Lazarus from the dead after four days, although he did that. It was not to turn the water into wine, although he did that. He, he did all of these things. He, he even healed Peter's mother-in-law, praise God. He even cares about mother-in-laws. Some of y'all didn't think that was funny. Some of y'all are too scared to laugh. <laughs> he came, he did a whole lot of stuff, but he came for one reason. And that one reason, Brother Chuck, we find in Matthew 1 and 21, when it says, for he shall save his people from their sins. That's it. That's the only reason he came. Yes, he did amazing things. Yes, he did wonderful things. But ultimately, he came and robed himself in flesh to nail that, to nail that flesh to a cross so that you and I didn't have to die in sin, so that you and I didn't have to die lost, so that you and I didn't have to die addicted and broken. He died so that we could live. Now, let me get back to my text, and hopefully some of y'all will jump back on board after this. Are y'all are with me today? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Brother Russell. I need that right now. Uh, 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 let, 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 me, let me take you to John 14 and 28. He's talking of all these things, and, and, and his disciples are around him, and uh, he's, he's talking to, to his disciples. You guys, y'all are gonna be my disciples. And he's, he's talking to them, and he's saying, he said, if you love me, throw John 14, 28 up there, would you? Turn to your neighbor and say, hang on, it's going to get better. Just, just hang on, hang on. He said, watch. He said, if you loved me, you would rejoice. Because I said, I go unto the Father. Let me, let me translate right there. He said to his disciples, if you loved me, you would be happy that I was leaving you. You got to understand, these people, these disciples left everything to follow him. Everything. They left their careers, which means they left their promise of money. <laughs> they, I, I mean, they, they, they left everything. They, they walked away from family. They walked away from anything future. They walked away from everything to follow Jesus. And he turns around to him and says, after three and a half years, if, if you really loved me, you would be glad that I was leaving. <laughs> That's crazy. I, I don't know if the disciples were normal or not. Peter gives me hope that they were normal. Man, thank God for Peter. I'm like, man, come on, Pete. That's right. That's right. You're so normal. Nobody else. Okay. <laughs> See you next Sunday. God bless, God bless you. Peter gives me hope, man. He, he just, he helps me a lot. And uh, man, if they were any sort of normal, when he said that statement, they probably, uh, Brother Chuck, were shaking in there. She's like, what in the world? You mean to tell, I'm supposed to rejoice that the man I gave up everything for is leaving? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Are you really sure that I should rejoice? That's, that, you know, that's, why, that's where the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Because there's sometimes you don't feel, and they didn't feel like it right there, I'll tell you right now. He said, you would rejoice because I go to the Father. Go to the next part of that verse. 
I'm going to explain it here. He said, for my father is greater than I. My father is greater than I. What, is that, what does that mean? Does that, we, we've, we've, the, the Bible declares to us that there is only one God. And if there is only one God, what does he mean when he says my father is greater? What, what does he mean by that? He doesn't mean that there is another person that is greater than him. But what he is saying to his disciples, what he was trying to tell them is what was to come. He was saying, if you love me, you would be glad that I was living leaving because yes, my flesh is good, but my spirit is even greater. Listen, I would have loved to have been around when Jesus walked this earth. Brother Jeremy, I would have loved to have been able to see the water turned into wine. I would have loved to be able to see Lazarus hop out of that grave in his grave clothes. Like I would have loved to be able to see all of these miracles. I would have loved to be able to see Peter walking on the water. To I would have loved to be able to see the man, the God that I have given my entire life to my entire world to. I would love to see the man that I've served for some years now, but he said it in scripture, amen, that the greatest gift that you will ever receive greater than the flesh of Jesus is the spirit that he is going to pour out and that he has poured out today. I would have loved to have seen him, but the greatest way that man has ever experienced God is when he fills our temple, is when he fills this body with his spirit, amen. When he fills me with the gift of the Holy Ghost because in his flesh, Brother Giovanni, he was limited. He could be in one place at one time and do uh, only so many things, but in his spirit, he goes from limited to omnipresent, everywhere at all times, all powerful, all knowing, able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or we can think. He becomes the God that's able to do anything, amen, that we can ask or think of him to do. Can I tell you today that his spirit in you is greater than him being around you. I don't want to just be around Jesus. I don't want to just be around him. I want him to be in me. I want him to be leading me. I want him to be guiding me directing me. I need him in my life. And so go to, go to John 14, 12. He says, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do. Why? Because I go to my father and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. Have you heard that before? We don't read the next part of the verse though. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. That the Spirit may be glorified in the flesh. <laughs> oh, in the flesh. He, he died, he was buried, he, he resurrected, he went on. But now he has called you and he has called me to become the sons of God. And so now because he was able to lay hands on the sick and they recover, I am able to lay hands on the sick and they because he was able to bind and loose. Now I am able to bind and to loose because he had power over all things in the earth. Now I have power over depression, over anxiety, over fear, over worry, over doubt. That is the benefit of his spirit today. I want you to stand with me all over the building. Listen, I learned a long time ago 
a message is better if it's short. If you, when you're a good preacher, like Pastor Bounds, you can preach an hour, an hour and a half and get away with it because you're a good preacher. But when you're somebody, thank you, Sister Carol, I, I know I'm telling the truth right now. But, but, but when you're somebody like me, you got to go short because the shorter it is, the better it is. And the longer it goes, the worse it gets. So I'm done. Listen, if you have never received his spirit today, I'm telling you right now, it is the greatest gift that man has ever received in this world. You've got to, you've got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Here's, here's the hard truth. You want the truth? Did you come to church to hear truth or just be patted on the back? Here's the hard truth, Romans 8 and 6 through 9, it goes on. I'm not going to read it all, but the Bible says that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Go to verse 9, Romans 8 and 9, throw that up there. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, watch, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Do you believe in God? That's amazing. That's great. That is a step. The Bible says, the, the problem with only believing is that the Bible says that the devils also believe. So when you stop at just believing that there is a God and he is your savior, you're about on the same plane as the devil. That's concerning. But here's the truth. The Bible says, if we, if, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in us, if He dwells in us, we're in the Spirit. Scripture commands us. It is a commandment of Scripture in order to be saved that we must repent. We must have faith. We must repent. We must be baptized in the name of Jesus. And we must be filled with the wonderful gift of his spirit. He said, for this promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off. That means it's for me and that means it's for you. But watch Galatians 5 and 22. Here's the benefit. Here's, here's such an amazing benefit of the spirit. When the spirit of God is in you, there is fruit of that spirit. And the fruit of the spirit in Galatians 5 and 22 is this, it's love, it's joy. My, we need joy right now. How many people are looking for joy in a weekend off work? Can't find it. Peace. Do we ever need peace in this world right now? That's in his spirit. It's, it's there. It's in, it's in his spirit. There's, there's, there's peace there. There's, there's peace in the spirit of God. There's, there's long suffering. You, you, you become long suffering. There's gentleness. Go on. There's, there's goodness. Amen. In his spirit. There's faith in his spirit. Go on. There's meekness in his spirit. There's temperance in him. When you get his spirit, you get all of the fruit of his spirit. You get the fruit of it. And I've come to tell you that, amen, more than you need, more than you need anything else in this world, you need, the, you need to receive the whole reason why he died. You need to receive the gift of his spirit. You need to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's why we celebrate Pentecost. That's why we celebrate Pentecost. Because, in, because back in Genesis, he, he gave, I don't have time to go into it, but he gave, he gave the law to Moses in Mount Sinai 50.
50 days after coming out of Egypt, he writes the law on the tables of stone with his own finger. Fast forward to Acts chapter two, 120 in the upper room, 50 days after the crucifixion of Jesus, 120 are together believing God for the promise of the Father. And all of a sudden, there comes a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it fills all of the house where they are sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them and they all and they all began to speak with other tongues as the spirit there's nothing like the Holy Ghost and that law that was written in stone in the Old Testament became the law, Brother Giovanni, that was etched on the heart of man. And now when I live, when I walk, when I move, there is a guiding in me. There is something in me that's leading me saying, go there, do that. Don't be a part of that. There is a law within my members, Paul said. There's something that leads me because it's God's spirit that has taken residence in my life. There's nothing like his spirit today. That's what I'm preaching to you. You need the gift of the Holy Ghost today. That's why we celebrate this Pentecost and because it represents the start of the church today that the God that was seen by hundreds and thousands of people in those three and a half years now he takes residence in us and we can experience him in no, in no greater way than any other man has ever experienced him we can experience him living in us lift your hands all over the room oh God I think it would be appropriate Come on, the Lord is pulling on some of you right now to get your heart right with Him and to be filled with His Spirit. I think it would be appropriate right now if there was repentance in this room. The Bible says if you, will, if, if you don't repent, you'll perish. I've come to tell you there needs to be repentance in this room right now. God, forgive me. Forgive me, oh Lord, for going to other things, for trying other things, for depending on other things, oh God, other than your spirit. Oh God, forgive me. Come on, all over the room, front to back, side to side. Let there be repentance in this room right now. Come on, just talk to God like you would a friend. Oh God, forgive me of my sin. mistakes. Forgive me of my faults and my failures. Oh God, I want to be saved. I want to be right. I want to be right, God. I need this gift. I need this gift. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Every head bowed and every eye closed. We do that because sometimes it can be uncomfortable just trying to, trying to make this easy. But if you're here today, if you've never received the Spirit of God or the gift of the Holy Ghost, it's the same thing. And you at the end of this message are saying, you know what? I think I need God's spirit. I think I need his spirit in my life. Would you raise your hand? Would you raise your hand? I see hands. I see hands. I'm going to give you another moment. Would you raise your hand? I see several hands in the building. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You can put your hands down. If you've never been baptized in Jesus' name, the scripture teaches us and commands us that unless you're born again of the water, meaning baptism and of the spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. If you've never been baptized in Jesus' name but would like to be baptized in Jesus' name today, would you raise your hand? Amen. Amen. Keep your hands lifted for just a moment. I see Thank you, God. Thank you, God. You can put your hands 
down. I'm glad to tell you there's two people that want to be baptized in Jesus' name today. I'm grateful for that. There's several in this room. There's several in this room that said, you know what, I've never received the gift of the Holy Ghost, but today I want to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I think that's amazing. Isn't, that, isn't it the greatest gift? Here's what I'm gonna ask us to do. If you, if you raised your hand that you'd like the Holy Ghost and you're comfortable, I'd like for you to come down to this part of the altar. We have a ministry team that's getting in place now that's going to come and pray with you. I'll tell you what, I'm going to ask everybody if you would. You don't have to come to the front if you're not comfortable, but if everybody could just move in some way, shape, or form, if you feel comfortable to come to the altar, I'm going to ask everybody that would, I'm going to ask you to come. I want our ministry team to come. We want to pray with you today ministers to just come and line this front. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, as everybody's moving, I just want you to entertain the presence of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Lord is going to pour out His Spirit. The Bible says it's a gift. We don't have to beg for it. We don't have to, oh God, please, 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 God, please. Oh God, help me, please. Oh, oh, oh. It's a gift. With a gift, you just, you receive that gift. So what we're going to do in just a moment, is we're all gonna lift our hands and close our eyes in just a moment and we're gonna praise God. We're gonna thank God for forgiving us, for, for loving us, for, 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 for His good things that have happened, uh, for, for the good things that have happened in our life that He's ordained and thank Him for forgiving you of your sins. And when you begin to praise God, you're gonna hear a language in your mind that you don't understand. The Bible calls it a heavenly language. It's a language that, that you didn't learn, you didn't study. It, 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 you know, I, I've heard some people say it, it sounds like baby talk, sounds like jibber jabber. It doesn't, it's, it's maybe not, make, won't make sense to you. It's a, it's a heavenly language that, that you don't learn, God gives it to you. And what happens, and what happened in the New Testament is that when they heard those words, they spoke them out of their mouth. The Bible says, for they heard them speak with other tongues. That was the evidence to them and people around them that the, the Spirit of God had filled them, amen, on the inside. And so let's lift our hands right now and let's begin to praise the Lord. If you need the Holy Ghost, just come right up here. There's some ministers that want to pray with you. If you raise your hand, come right up here. Come on, let's lift our hands and just begin to praise Him. Come on, let's begin to praise Him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 